World Space Flight News Special Report. The, the picture there is of me looking at the EFT-1 capsule just on the day of recovery. And in the same way that I appear to be looking at awe in that capsule, sometimes I look back at the whole journey to this point with a little bit of awe. So I hope to share that a little bit with you today. So the Orion program um, and Ames' role. So Orion started, or uh, the program started in 2006. Uh, then it was called the Multi-Purpose Crew Vehicle, or MPCV. At the same time, uh, NASA recognized the need for a TPS Advanced Development Project, or ADP. There's a couple of us with the shirts on in the room today. Uh, that ran from 2006 to 2009, and its purpose was to get started early on a large-scale ablative heat shield, technology that NASA had not pursued since the Apollo program ended in the uh, early 70s. That ADP was based here at Ames, and it provided the early development work for the program. Uh, in 2009, the Orion contract itself was awarded to Lockheed Martin, who then took on the work. And Ames has continued to support that work with uh, ArcJet testing, thermal and structural analysis, material development, technical leadership, and continues to do that today. So the Orion spacecraft uh, we really consists of three parts, three modules. We have a launch abort system, a crew module, and a service module. The launch abort system is only there uh, in the case that during ascent, there's a problem with the booster, with the launcher, and it pulls the crew module with the crew off uh, to perform a safe landing while the rocket is unsafely doing something else. Uh, once, that, uh, once a nominal ascent happens, though, uh, we end up in our on-orbit configuration. We've got the crew module and the service module together. Uh, and you can see those modules here on the right of the chart. Today, I'm going to be talking about the heat shield, which is the base of the crew module. So on the way up, it's at the back. But on entry, that's the part that comes in first. And that's the part that really protects the vehicle from the heat of reentry. So if you know any history, uh, even a little bit, you should notice that the Orion uh, architecture, the modules, they look a lot like Apollo did. Uh, and so here's a brief comparison of Apollo to Orion. So Orion um, is larger than Apollo. Apollo was uh, you know, a little over 12 feet diameter, a little over 3 meters. Uh, Orion is 5 meters diameter, 16 and a half feet. Apollo is designed for three uh, astronauts. Orion is designed for four. Uh, but one of the major differences between the two programs is that in the Apollo program, those missions were designed for uh, mission durations 12 to 14 days or so. Orion is being designed for uh, upwards of 200 days in orbit. So even though the sizes may look kind of similarly when placed in scale on paper and you're only one more crew, there's a lot more going on with Orion because of the focus on the long-term mission duration, flexibility to go to destinations and perform missions other are, are, that are a little bit beyond what, what the Apollo program did. So before going too much further into heat shields, uh, we need one brief slide tutorial on ablation. Uh, and atmospheric entry. So it's really a power problem if you, if, when you come to think of it. Now, one of my colleagues posed it very well that way. Uh, so an entering spacecraft, whether it's entering Earth's atmosphere or anywhere else, is doing an energy exchange. They're exchanging, you're exchanging kinetic energy or your orbital energy uh, into heat, basically. You're changing it into heat to slow yourself down. The faster that entry is, the more heat that is generated and the less time you have to dissipate it, either by absorbing it into the vehicle or ejecting it away from the vehicle. Uh, convective heating kind of goes like the, the cube power of velocity. So as your velocities go up, your heating goes up very, very quickly. Earth entries from low Earth orbit uh, are typically around the 7 kilometers per second range. That's where space shuttle would come in from or other vehicles from low Earth orbit. Um, and today's materials that we have, insulative materials or materials that might be reusable, uh, simply cannot stand the, the heat energy that results when you enter faster than that 7 kilometers per second. So if you're going to do something like that, you need to get into ablative systems. Uh, and so instead of simply insulating a spacecraft from that heat, what ablative systems do is actually consume that heat energy through different chemical processes, uh, vaporization, sublimation, pyrolization, et cetera. So uh, one of the other benefits that they have is that when the materials do this, they tend to eject gases out of the vehicle and push the boundary layer up away from the vehicle, sort of pushing the heat away, if you will. Uh, to keep the spacecraft cool. What they're really doing, if you think about it in a, in a broader scale, is they're providing power out of the spacecraft during entry instead of taking all that energy in and soaking it and through an insulative technique, they're actually ejecting power out. So that's ablation in a nutshell. 
So let's get into the, the Orion system uh, specifically. So uh, for the EFT-1 flight test, um, this is the, a picture of the heat shield right before the paint went on in the lower left there. Um, it's the largest ablative heat shield ever made on this planet, I like to say. Uh, it's made of a material called Avcoat, and a, speci a specific formulation of Avcoat uh, called HCG, or honeycomb gun. Uh, so what Avcoat is, it's an epoxy Novolac resin that's injected into an open cell fiberglass honeycomb matrix on top of a carrier structure. And so for our size, for Orion, and this is the same system that Apollo used, for our size for Orion, on our five meter heat shield, we have it over 300,000 individual cells within this honeycomb matrix that, matrix that were filled. When we were all done, the whole thing weighed about 4,000 pounds, uh, 1,800 kilograms, and about a quarter of that was the Avcoat material itself. And you can see on the right, kind of get a sense of what this looks like zoomed in. Uh, the upper picture is of a, one of our test articles of this configuration. That's what it looks like before entry. You can kind of see the honeycomb structure in there and then the brownish, purplish ablator in each of those cells. And then after entry, since it is an ablator, uh, it, you can see the charred surface on the lower right there. And that's the way that the whole heat shield looks after it enters, and we'll have, talk about that a little bit in, the, uh, in a minute. So if you flip this thing over, the back side of the heat shield looks like this. This is the carrier structure, what's what we call it. Uh, it's a carbon laminate skin. It's got a spider web of titanium stringers on the back. And the reason it looks similar to a bridge is because not only does this heat shield have to protect the spacecraft during entry from entry heat, this is also how we splash down in the ocean, right? The mission for Orion ends with a uh, splash down into the ocean, and the heat shield is what you land on. So not only are you protecting from entry, you also have this other design constraint. You have to take all of that splash down load, which is why it looks as beefy as it does. Mm -hmm.